The Boys was created by Eric Kripke and premiered on Amazon Prime last year. Sorry it's been so long since my last video, I've been busy with college and finals, I thought I'd do something quick and easy and a TV review seemed like the right thing to do. Plus, this series' second season came out not too long ago, so I thought I'd give the first season a watch and review it. Full disclaimer, I have not read the comic, so I don't really know if the show is similar and in what regards it is or is not similar. This review will really be just what I think of the show. I won't be comparing it to the comics at all. Also, because this season's been out for a while, I will not withhold spoilers. There will be many, many spoilers in this review, you've been warned. So let's get started with the plot. The Boys follows a group of vigilantes dedicated to taking down corporate-run superheroes. In this universe, superheroes are celebrities and they're owned by a corporation called Vought. Vought's primary team of superheroes is called The Seven, and while they publicly appear to be crime-fighting do-gooders, that facade is slowly pulled back and we get to see who they really are. In the first episode, we meet the protagonist, Huey Campbell, who's a down-on-his-luck loser. The only thing good in his life is his girlfriend, Robin, who gets accidentally murdered by a superhero named A-Train. Huey meets Billy Butcher, who shows him that the superheroes of this universe are not what they seem, and the two set out to take down corrupt superheroes. The other main plotline follows Annie January slash Starlight, a superhero who gets recruited into the Seven and slowly learns that her heroes are not what she thought they were. Her plotline works as an allegory for the entertainment industry. Instead of getting to do the thing you're passionate about, fighting crime slash making art, you become a product to be exploited and commercialized. There are also a few subplots, one about a mysterious drug called Compound V, and one about the character The Deep. I feel like this season is paced very solidly, and manages to juggle several different storylines and several different tones very well. It blends black comedy with superhero action and character drama very well. Like I said before, the pacing is also very solid, with eight hour-long episodes feeling just right. The only critique I have with the season's plot is that I wish it had more of a definitive climax. I know that this is just the first season of an ongoing series, but I wish that this season's individual storyline had a more definitive endpoint. This season doesn't really feel like it ends, it just kinda... stops, I guess. Let's move on to characters. Let's start by examining the eponymous boys. The two protagonists of the series are Billy Busher, played by Carl Urban, and Huey Campbell, played by Jack Quaid. I really, really love the interaction between these two actors. Huey's naive incompetence mixes very well with Butcher's gruff demeanor. I also love Huey's character growth in the season. He starts out being somewhat of a pathetic loser, and over the course of the season becomes more confident in who he is and what he can do. At first, Carl Urban's Billy Butcher felt like a cliché tough guy, but as the season went on and the layers were pulled back, he becomes a more complex character. I also love the interaction between Frenchie, played by Tomer Capone, and Mother's Milk, played by Laz Alonzo. While they do provide a lot of comic relief, they also have a fair amount of depth to them and provide the quote-unquote ghost of the series. The other member of the team is Kamiko, played by Karen Fukuhara. She only gets a little bit of depth in this season, but I can't wait to see what they do with her in Season 2. Let's move on to the more or less antagonists of the show, The Seven. In this universe, The Seven are the main superhero team, and five of The Seven serve as dark analogs for DC's Justice League. Homelander for Superman, Queen Maeve for Wonder Woman, Black Noir for Batman, A-Train for The Flash, and The Deep for Aquaman. The best performance in the show is probably Anthony Starr as Homelander. He perfectly mixes the charismatic public persona with the sociopathic inner nature of the character. The scene with him and Maeve on the plane shows how unhinged he really is. Aaron Moriarty plays Annie January slash Starlight, a naive and innocent new recruit of the Seven. She plays the audience surrogate, who slowly realizes that her heroes are not who she thought they were and Moriarty manages to switch between the innocuous public persona of Starlight to the more nuanced Annie perfectly. Her and Jack Quaid have really good chemistry, and they have one of the best anti-meat cutes I've ever seen. Dominique McElliott plays Queen Maeve, who was once optimistic and full of hope and wanted to do the right thing, but slowly lost all hope and became a victim of the commercial machine. She isn't explored that much in this season, but I see a lot of potential for her character to grow in the following seasons. Chance Crawford plays the Deep, a misogynistic douche who starts to have a change of heart. 
What I love about the character is he is truly morally gray. You can't really call him a good guy or a bad guy. The audience isn't really supposed to know how to feel about him. Through his character, the series asks the question if someone who was truly a bad person can change for the better. I cannot wait to see where his story goes in season two. Also, I love how this show gets how much of a joke Aquaman is and uses it to its advantage. Nathan Mitchell plays Black Noir, a mysterious masked member of the Seven. We don't get much of him in this season, but I can't wait to find out more. Finally, there's A-Train, who's obsessed with keeping his title as the fastest man alive. His character is an exploration of addiction and obsession and what fame does to someone's ego. The subplot about him and Popclaw shows how far some people are willing to go to preserve their public image. The only other significant character is Madeline Stilwell, played by Elizabeth Shue. She heads up the Vought Corporation and uses manipulation to get her way. She has this weird Oedipal relationship with Homelander, and their dynamic is one of the more interesting in the series. I love how over the course of the series, Homelander really comes into his own and learns how to be independent from her. As for the themes, this season tackles a lot of big ideas and manages to handle most of them pretty well. The most prominent one is the idea of real-life superheroes who get exploited for monetary gain. If Watchmen's perspective was, if superheroes were real, they'd be traumatized, the boys' perspective is, if superheroes were real, they'd be used to make money. I've already touched a bit on the allegory for the entertainment industry and how naive people who are also big dreamers can be taken advantage of. The season communicates its ideas very well, managing to be subtle when it needs to be, but also heavy-handed when appropriate. The only thing I don't really care for thematically is just how preachy it gets at times. While yes, the preachiness sometimes works with the show's over-the-top tone, there are other times, like the Christian rally scene, where the preachiness just becomes dumb. So overall, this season manages to satire the superhero genre while also serve as an allegory for the entertainment industry and tie all of it together into a pretty solid knot. So to wrap up, The Boys is a highly engaging piece of superhero metafiction. It has an engaging storyline, fun and nuanced characters, and explores some serious issues as well. It fully commits to its premise and its deeper ideas while also having a lot of fun. I'm gonna give it a positive review. So yeah, that's it. That's my thoughts on The Boys Season 1. I'll have a review for Season 2 out soon. What other TV shows would you guys like to see me review? It can be something old, something new, something funny, something serious. Just let me know what you guys want. If you guys want to see other TV reviews I've done, I'll link the playlist down below. So as always, thank you guys very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Bye.